you're the godparent of the Neuland Big One Art, our new marker. So you were one of the first people to receive this marker to test it. What was the first thing you thought when you held it in your hands? <laughs> I was like, finally, this is a dream come true. Um, I have to tell you that I don't have children, so I don't know what it's like to receive such a new thing, beautiful thing in my hand until this came. And um, I have to say that the most frequently answer, asked question that I get when teaching, I'll teach everyone how to use the, the, the Neuland number one brush marker and people will start writing and then all of a sudden they say when is Neuland coming out with the big one version and I asked this question to Guido five years ago and the concern was that the delivery of the ink and you can't hardly see it because of the because of how dark this is but it was the delivery of the ink um, to the very tip wasn't stable enough and so um, he he told me that it was coming and I really didn't believe him. And in fact, I was so excited when he first told me and he told me that I couldn't tell anyone. I just decided to forget it. And then it showed up in the mail and I was like, wow, he has engineered a way to make a large scale nib. And so the world, of course, is a better place for graphic recorders because now we have this new incredible tool. Okay, yeah. so you received it and then you weren't able to tell anyone I guess that must have been hard. <laughs> it was so hard and I had to put it away. Like I couldn't have it on my desk because I have, you know, all these markers on my desk. And if I turn on my camera and yeah. someone sees it and they say, what's that? Or if I accidentally <laughs> pull it out and start writing with it, I just, I'd let the cat out of the bag. So I had to put them all <laughs> in one place and put them away so that I, no one would see them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine that. Right now, there's no comparable marker um, on the market. Could you give our readers or the people who are watching this video now an impression um, for which tasks they could use the big one art and in which situations is it a must have? Yes, absolutely. Um, I always say to my students to let the marker do the heavy lifting. And so the big one art is a must have for title size lettering for large charts, those who want to do large brush scale or large scale brush lettering, instead of drawing out fake calligraphy, you know, where you draw the thick lines in and then fill them in, this marker is going to do that for you. So it's the right tool for the job. So it's perfect for wall size, pin board, flip charts. I've even used it on my Wally. -E. And so anything where you're going to do something large and you're doing brush lettering, sign painter, all of the lettering styles that go with this most versatile marker. Um, sometimes I even use it to um, letter really large parcels that I send in the mail. So some people have actually already received my lettering on a, on a, um, on a, uh, envelope but they probably have no idea how I did it I didn't tell them yeah yeah so you already mentioned um lettering and we all know that you are the lettering queen at least to us <laughs> um have you already created a new lettering style or are you working on a new style yes absolutely I am currently working on a new style and it's under the final design and testing um because I started with the flex one and I was designing it with it. And then when the big one came in, I went, we can go from business card to flip chart. Like we can go really big with it. But right now I have five lettering styles that I currently teach using the brush marker and they are title lettering styles. So now we can actually use the big one art and that's wacky Western. That's in my book, sign painter, brush lettering, national parks which is also in my book and twinkle and if you've seen twinkle that's the free lettering style that zandra dirks and i did a few years ago but you can also write architect i have a technique i call double stroke first stroke that's where you make bold letters very 
quickly just using your handwriting. And then Neuland Hand, we usually use, oh no, I don't have my big one, just the regular big one around, but the big one wedge nib, we, I use for that. And Carol Dubosh, my teacher, has a lettering style called Jubilee, and it's super fun. And she's going to be teaching that. Actually, she teaches it all the time, but she's going to teach it to my students. And I'm going to show how you can use the big one on it um, when it when it comes out. I won't sure. I won't uh, tell the secret yet. So you already mentioned some lettering styles. Which are your favorite lettering styles with the new big one? <laughs> Well, I have to say that I write brush lettering and um, sign painter over and over again, but Wacky Western, wa Western, hard to say, is absolutely my favorite. It's fun, it's funky, it's easy to write fast, and it has a really great rhythm to it, and it looks the best large, and it's, it's the one that you can go the biggest with. So anyone who knows me knows that this is my favorite marker because it truly is the most versatile. And what I would say to others who are trying to find their favorite lettering style is go with the one that you feel most confident writing. After talking so much about the new big one, could you maybe show us how you use it? Because that's yes. the most exciting part for me. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I'm going to use the hand lettering learning pad to go. We designed this specifically for the number one marker, but I have realized that it can be used with any of the brush nibs, that it all works the same. So I'll give you just a quick, um, a quick lesson on when you first get to know your big one art, and I'm going to open this up. It opens just like the other big ones, right? We pop it with our thumb and look, it kissed me. I was waving it around a few minutes ago and it just kissed me on the thumb. So you'll hold it with the ergonomic grip. And I love the little nose because it keeps it from rolling off the table. So you'll hold it with the ergonomic grip. And what you'll want to do is hold it as horizontal and it still needs to be a little bit comfortable, but horizontal and flat so that you can get a nice thick line right and then I kind of do like a little ratchet up come up a little bit higher I, this feels a little bit more comfortable maybe not press down as much and what I'm doing here is I'm trying to figure out where what is the uh, spectrum of how thick and how thin this marker can write and then once I figure out where it feels most comfortable in my hand then I know that I can get a consistent or semi-consistent. So these are all pretty consistent, not too big, not too thin. And then I know that that's going to be that kind of, I'm kind of developing the finesse. Um, when the marker comes from the factory, it's nice and, and conical, right? And so one of the things that we need to remember about the marker is that we're going to use two different sides of the marker. We're going to use the the broad side, this is the side of the marker, and the very tip. But we use the very tip really sparingly. We mainly write from the side here. And so whenever we're doing um, brush lettering, we go thick down and then thin up is when I'm coming up on the tip. And this is really small. Or that's really small for the A. It should actually be more this size. So. That's sort of my just quick lesson with, you know, how to do, how to play with this marker. I also love to do brush let or um, sign painter. Sign painter is super fun. And one of the things that you have to get used to, and this marker is super juicy. You can see it's bleeding a little bit here. But what you have to get used to is making really long strokes. And so while we use smaller markers, we're using mainly our fingers and sometimes our wrists to be able to write. See that it's all in my fingers. When we're working with the big one, we have to use a completely different set of muscles. We're holding our hand really straight. Our wrist is pretty straight, but it's our elbows and our shoulders that are moving. So when I'm writing this, notice my hand stays in the same position and the movement is really coming from my shoulders and my elbow. And that's going to help you get nice straight lines. And 
keep in mind too that when we get to the wall I mean I'm just working on my tabletop now so that I can get really good at my form but when we go to work at the wall we're going to be writing probably below the line a little bit more or we're going to need to stand on a stool so that we're a little bit closer to the letters that we're writing. Also, what I'd like to mention at this point, you know, the outliner, this is the marker to use if you want to um, use a lot of light colors as well. But um, for this uh, particular outliner, we should wait a couple of seconds until it's dry and, yes. and then go over it with colors. <laughs> Yes. Because, um, some people Super juicy. Just, yeah, right. Some people yeah. may just go over it immediately and that's too soon for the outliner. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, this marker, this nib delivers a lot of ink, a lot of ink. Um, and it's only bleeding here because this paper is practice paper. But yeah. on your paper that you put on the walls, um, it should be fine. Do you have any other questions about this or is there anything you want to see me write? You can do some, some of your magic. <laughs> <laughs> some of my magic, yeah. yeah. So what I love about Wacky Western, and it's funny because Wacky Western, I believe if I remember correctly, is about seven nib widths high. So that's a pretty tall letter, but because you're doing um, double strokes, on one or more of the um, stems, plus you're adding these serifs at the bottom, you could get really big with it. So I'm gonna do a really big A, and you'll notice that I don't lose much in terms of proportion. So that's a nice big letter there. That is definitely title size. And if we needed to write a letter like that using the number one, we would have to draw it first oh, and then yeah. go back in, fill it in. We'd have to do all this fill in. It would take a really, really, really long time, you know, and there'd be a lot of cleanup. It's like, you saw I did that in just a few strokes. So yes, this, this big one art marker really satisfies a lot of, um, a lot of uh, our, our, really big title lettering styles yeah coming in and playing with that no kidding how thick can this go you know when you do it really thick and then come up and go a little bit thinner and thinner you'll start to feel where it's most comfortable in your hand and then once you figure that out i think it's somewhere for me it's somewhere between these two um, then you want to make sure that you keep those consistent thicks going down Right, and so once you figure out where that pressure is, first you go for comfort, and then you go for what it looks like. I know it's so hard. We look at things and we think, oh, I wanna be able to write like that. But if you don't know how it, you got there or how that mark was made, it's really difficult to do. And the first thing is, is if you're gonna write over and over and over again, you've gotta make sure that you're really comfortable. And so um, some practice lines that you might consider, and I've got a whole, look, I've been, I've been practicing, so I've got just pages and pages of my practice here. But when practicing, getting, um, making sure that you've got your thick down, and I'm holding my marker down and to the left here, and then thin up, making these Vs. Notice that I am, I'm picking up my hand each time. Now, we're used to writing these much smaller with the art marker right so now you're getting used to this is a really long line and it might be helpful to go very long practice moving your entire arm rather than just your fingers and your wrist and after you fill up a whole page of those then you can go to a you can go to another color i would probably recommend working lighter and then going darker so that's going to help you get the no kiddings thicks and thins on your straight lines. And then to practice on um, your rounded lines, you're going to go slow. I'm going to start thick going down and then thin going up. And if that seems a little bit shaky, just 
focus on your grip a little bit, how your angle is just to get comfortable. That gets shaky because you might be in an uncomfortable angle. And so what's happening is you're playing with that pressure and you're going to make the transition here, but you're going to start feeling the transition there. And so just making a bunch of U's, that's going to help you. And then do some upside down where you're starting at the bottom going up. So you're going to do thin up, thick down. That's going to help as well because you're going to get used to making that, um, that pressure difference from thick to thin going up and down. Yeah, so that's going to help with brush lettering. Now when it comes to, say, sign painter, the big key is going to be doing big, long, straight, even lines. And so I would focus on that. And notice that I'm starting, start, draw, stop. And so you can almost see a little bit of extra ink that's deposited here. And you know that you're doing it right for Sign Painter when there's an angle to it like this on every single one of your strokes. And learning Sign Painter is going to grant you that, give you that confidence you need to make those strokes. So I'm going to draw right over this because it's in black. So when it comes to doing Sign Painter, and of course I'm going much faster now, one of the things that's, that's a challenge that I'm just now getting used to is size, right? Look how big my eye got bigger down here yeah. than all of my other letters. And they can kind of run away from you because getting that size going from, you know, your, your number one to your big one, it takes a little bit of time. And some folks naturally feel uh, more comfortable with one over the other. And so if you pick up the marker and it doesn't feel fantastic right away, don't worry. Um, just take some time to feel what it's like to do some of these larger letters. I did this super fast. Now I was able to slow down a little bit. Okay, I can slow down. I can be more mindful about my letters. And like I always say, especially when it comes to sign painter, is start slow to go fast. And eventually you'll get that form down and you can start to write much faster with confidence and speed. Um, but once you get that form down, Sign Painter is one of the fastest lettering styles we can use as visual practitioners, and it looks awesome large. Good news to everyone. Heather Martinez has to practice too. <laughs> Absolutely. That's how I got here. <laughs> so I just got a little bit of a head start, just a little bit of one. But it was because of the number one art marker and um, these practice sheets that have helped me get there. So I can throw out brush lettering very easily. The sign painter comes naturally to me in the smaller size, but I have to work at it a little bit harder as we get bigger, so yes. Now the outliner ink is dry. Yeah. And so now we can show. Yay, it doesn't smear. Woohoo. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you definitely have to wait for it to dry, but there's no smearing here. This is nice, clean ink. Yep. Yay. I love the outliner. Yes, I do too. Yeah, next question. Why would you recommend the big one art? I think it will really round out your collection. So whether you are a visual practitioner and you work on the wall and you do really large scale, you absolutely have to have this. There's no question that it's it's right up there. It needs to sit right next to your other big one um, for the lettering styles that it can put out. But even if you're not a visual practitioner <clears throat> and you do a lot of lettering with markers or just different types of mark making tool, there's nothing else like this out in the market. And so I can't wait to share this with my calligraphy friends who are finding other ways to do brush lettering <clears throat> where they have to actually dip the ink, this will deliver the ink consistently over and over and over again. So yes, it's, it's, it's really important to have this just as an extra mark making tool. And I would recommend buying it in the color that you love, or what I like to do is to buy the empty ones and put my favorite inks in them. Um, I like to mix my own inks. So Neuland, Neuland inks mix inks mix very well together so I like to make a lot of signature inks and um, for calligraphers a lot of them like to use um, uh, 
fountain pen inks. And so if an ink will go through a fountain pen, it will also go through this marker as well. Also, I think it's, um, it's worth mentioning that um, the new Big One Art is also a marker to write slower with, right? There are some markers you mm -hmm. use to write fast and others you use to write slower. Um, yes, yeah. and mainly because of how big your writing. It takes longer and it takes longer to master those really long strokes. Remember what I was saying, we're used to using a, a pen or a pencil all day so we can write really fast and smaller. But when we get bigger, we're using more of our body and writing really big lines. So take your time and brush lettering is slower anyway. Yeah, yeah this is cool. this is even slower. If I were to have a scale, I think this is probably the slowest marker that you'll oh, use okay. and then yeah yeah and i have done that before i teach a class on the speed of lettering the, yeah. the every marker has a speed every lettering style has a speed thank you very much for everything thank you <laughs> thank you that was fun